welcome to episode two, Pushing Forward, uh, with Kevin Ross, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, gear breakdown. Uh, this is some of the gear that Kevin uses in uh, training, also personal use of the range, and uh, so we're going to take a little time. He's going to kind of go over some of the items we have here on the table and uh, what he uses them for. Let's start with uh, this heavy guy right here. Uh, I've noticed when we spend time at the range, every time I try to grab your range bag to help you, that thing weighs, it's almost like a deadlift, so. Oh, it's, it's it, I was gonna say, it holds a lot, and luckily it's first beer. I've used first beer gear since back in the day before they were first beer guys. Uh, in my opinion, they build some of the best quality um, cases, clothes, uh, armor carriers, everything. Uh, I have never been disappointed. Numerous SWAT teams, military units use it, and that's not the reason I chose it. I chose it because it's the best I can get and I can afford. And uh, <clears throat> like anything that's quality, it's gonna it's gonna have some price attached to it. But you know, uh, buy once, cry once. I yeah. was like, I. Uh, buddy of mine, Mike, has the saying, hey, I'm too poor to be cheap. And I was like, <laughs> exactly. And so the, this is a, a bag that Johnny and Ronnie sent me from First Beer uh, to TNE, and it is a uh, prototype bag for the military, one of the units there. It's like their Sherpa range bag, but it's actually kind of, uh, <clears throat> it's actually about double width. It actually has an extra uh, panel on the side for magazines and another gun. So the Sherpa is basically one sided of it. doesn't have the extra pocket on the side of it. When it's available, I don't know when it will be or made available, but I've been using it for a little over a year. Okay. It's the best gun bag I've ever had. Yeah, yeah I've noticed you've had it for, for, for quite a while. And I mean, you just have it, you have it loaded down with ammunition, you know, full mags, uh, magazines, everything. And just for it to be uh, just picking up and being so heavy, but it's so, I mean, the back can take it. That's oh, the yeah. cool thing, it's very sturdy. Yeah, this so. thing's got eyes, ears in it, six yeah. loaded M16 mags, um, AR mags. Um, let's, let's dig in there. Let's see what we got in there. Oh. These right here. Are the, bags of ammo right yeah, there. We got three separate ones, yeah. 45, 9, and 556. Yeah. Um, Velcro, removable dividers, keep my ear pro in pockets that unzip. I I'll keep. Oh, please, right there, as, yep. as usual. Oh, yeah. In, in pockets open up, and they have the uh, my timers, my two pack timers in it. Yeah. Um, they've got two padded freaking pistol sleeves in here where I can run my guns in here padded. And what's cool is they're big enough. Mm -hmm. If I go to the range, like when I teach a class and I'm teaching 1911s or double single trigger groups or, or striker fires. I can actually stack two in here. I'll just stack one barrel down and one barrel up, and I can actually yeah. hold four pistols in here. But as you picked it up before, it can get very heavy quick. Yeah. And then on the outside, Velcro panels where I can uh, load my magazines, double stack my single stack mags on one side, yeah. and it'll hold uh, four per shingle in each one of them. So all my Glock CZ mags on one yeah. side, and then all my 1911 on the other. And the thing is, been with me to indoor outdoor ranges and I carry a lot of weight in it and it has supported it haven't had one zipper come loose yeah no, nothing tear or stretch it's been a very good bag also you know essentials like Copenhagen oh yeah <laughs> yeah my nice Copenhagen co holder there as I'm addicted to yeah. nicotine so let's talk about uh, iPro that's uh, another thing that uh, a lot of trainers don't really emphasize on and uh, how important it is as far as having good quality eye protection because you know there's different coated lenses, durability, everything else like that. And so uh, what kind of Oakleys are you running on? Um, uh, on the Oakleys, I run the M frames uh, and, uh, or either the, uh, the radars. And right now I'm running the radars. I got my outdoor set, which is the new prism lens style. I like it. Because, Prisms are awesome, man. Yep. I can adjust and then take them out yeah. of there. It's good wraparound eye protection. I know it's ballistic protected up to a certain caliber and range. So spalling or ricochets that come off won't yeah. get through there for me, uh, get there uh, for me. Um, I love Oakleys. I've worn them ever since I was a kid. And, and some say, you know, that's a Gucci, uh, that's a Gucci thing. You just like them because they're Oakleys and they're a, a major brand and everybody wears them. I was like, no, these are the best eye pro I've yeah. ever worn. Um, the, these are my outdoor eye pro I use whenever I teach or compete outdoors in direct sunlight. The ones that I like the best is the exact same model, um, the vented paths with uh, this one has the uh, photo sensitive lenses, the photocombs. Okay. Yeah. And so clear and indoor, but I go outdoor and UV hits it, they instantly turn to black, come back inside. And the good thing about the Oakleys, is their time is the time to go from black dark to clear or clear to dark is very quick 
I used to wear these on SWAT because you gotta have cool guy glasses when you're on the SWAT team. But <laughs> you want effective yeah. eye pro. We wear eye pro whenever we go in or do anything because you've got flash banks going off. They kick up yeah. dust, dirt, debris, and get in your eyes. It'll hit your eyes. And the good thing about these is if we ended up outside on perimeter or I ended up outside um, for a long period of time, yeah. these will be dark and protect my eyes. I don't have to worry about glare and sunlight. But as soon as I hit the door and went through, instantly clear. Yeah. And so I could see a little bit more significant cost than a standard lens. But if you're looking at going indoors to outdoors quite often, yeah. I definitely recommend those type of lenses from Oakley for, for the price. You, I've used that same set of lenses for five, six yeah. years. And that's the thing too. It's, it's just like it, it, in that role is, uh, you know, being a SWAT, how you, that's, you're going to be going indoors in a vehicle, get out of the vehicle in a house. It's, it's good to have something like that. And, Quality eye pro. I mean, as much as like popular steel is to shoot, I don't know, right? it's like having quality eye pro and you're shooting steel. I don't know how many times you, I mean, you've been out there. I've been pepper too. You get that little ping on your neck or something like that yeah. with the pump oh, shit. But uh, yeah, it's very important uh, on the eye pro side. So uh, next, we got uh, right here, we got your uh, gun belt, nice rigid belt here. And let's uh, just kind of go over why you set it up in this configuration. Um, you know, um, what you learned from that. Okay, um, back in the day, of course, old guy, um, we didn't have cool high-speed gear like we do nowadays. Um, most of the time it was an old slick belt and we had to use belt keepers to keep it on. Yeah. Um, I'd say I switched to Molly literally within the last decade and not a lot of people came up with a very good thin inch and a quarter to two inch belt on Molly. And now that I've gotten it, I've always been big on, hey, once you learn your gear and equipment, you want it to stay in the same place. Even if you take a good spill or a tumble, you don't want that stuff sliding around on you. And so I've switched to a Molly belt. This thing is very stiff on the outside, which I like. Um, inner Velcro duty, or inner belt two inch inner belt yep. with pile tape on it. So once I get it set and cinched on, and I get it Velcroed on, no need for keepers. The belt will not rotate or move. My gear will yeah. stay in place. And luckily with the uh, additional molly on the outside, any pouches, um, dump pouches, magazine weapons pouches, tourniquet pouches that I put on there, they're gonna stay in place as well and they don't move. They don't slide up or down. They stay exactly where I want them to stay. Um, for my setup, <clears throat> On this particular gun belt that has the D-ring, um, it's one of my older belts for training and SWAT, and we always had this if we rode on the outside of the APC. We had, we had uh, lanyards that we would attach and clip into the APC, so if you're riding on the skids going up to the, the, the residence, anything the driver does, he takes a quick sharp left or right to avoid anything, and you don't have a good secure grip or see yeah. that movement coming, off the side you go. Um, most of the time, for most people, don't need that on there. Uh, it just happens to be the belt that has it on there for that. It takes up a little bit extra space up front. Um, <clears throat> a lot of guys are now starting to rotate this over. Uh, I know Dimebanger, good buddy of mine, Irvin Swat dude, um, he likes to move it over to the side, but I'm kind of, yeah. like I said, I'm an old guy. I'm used to the way <laughs> I set it up. Yeah. I keep the buckle up front. Um, holster options and leg options, I run everything from um, belt mounted to drop leg prop form. When I go drop leg, I like it short and single strap. I don't want it far down on my leg where I gotta reach far to get the gun. I usually just want the gun to come the very top edge of the gun of the grip to be right at the level with my belt or close to it. Similar to what I wore on duty use, that way you're not literally doing two different types of movements and having to retrain between a severe drop or either a higher yeah. mid-ride or high-level holster. Okay. Um, Use the DFA from Safari Land and their shroud. I like the DFA because it's rubberized, it stays in place, it doesn't slide around. I don't have to drill a hole, zip tied, or tape it to the belt, so it's always there. Okay. It stays there due to the friction. Um, use the QLS platform. I use a lot of different holsters. I use Safari Land holsters and retention level holsters, level ones and twos, especially when I'm teaching. Uh, military law enforcement, they don't yeah. use friction level holsters. They've got to have an added form of mechanical retention. Yeah. And so I can easily interchange, plus I run a different lot, uh, a lot of different weapons platforms, 1911s, striker fires, double singles, doubles only, uh, different types of weapons. So I just get the holster I want, attach the QLS plate, and luckily with the taco pouches, I can pull my nine millimeter, 45 double stacks out and throw my single stacks right in the same pouch and they'll stay retained. Um, 
run a triple shingle for my pistol, double for my rifle and my competitive rigs. I'll pull this last uh, tourniquet holder on the back and I'll stick another rifle rig okay. or rifle holster there. Okay. Um, so you got a couple of tourniquets, then dump pouch, and uh, you know, nice little personal touch on that. I'll flip that around here. You guys can see that. Yep, I love the tourniquet holders. Um, I usually on a rig, I'll attach another one up front and I always have one usually attached to my body armor. Okay. Um, I'll carry three to four on me at one time. Anybody that does TCCC knows you need one for upper, upper extremities, two for lower extremities, and I usually try to carry three or four of them okay. on me whenever I run the gun. Great, and let's see. We've got this rig, let's see the side. And let's, let's talk about this here. All right, this is my Strandhog uh, armor carrier from First Beer. Um, used First Beer whenever I was on SWAT. I've got my own personal armor carrier. Um, I love their equipment and the 612 system on there. Um, that stuff, when you use the 612 pouches and uh, with the 612 system, it's got the pile tape on the inside of it. The pouches will not move, they won't slide. They are, when you set your pouches, you need to make sure that is exactly where you want them because once you attach them, if you decide to move them even one over, you're gonna have your work cut out for you just to get the pouch up to get it back on. They do not move and they stay in place. First Beer makes phenomenal armor carriers. Uh, this one happens to have plates front and rear, um, soft panels on the inside, and then I've got soft cummerbund on the outside with level 3A protection on it. I also have the op uh, ability to also put my 6x6 inch okay. rifle plates on there. Um, if I was still doing it for duty or SWAT use, yeah. I'd have the rifle plates in there. As a trainer, yeah. I just run the 3A on the sides. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, then it's tucked away here. What do we got in this pouch right there? In this pouch right here, usually whenever I'm running out there in class, I'll attach another tourniquet here, unless I've got it in my car or something, or use it for something else. For this pouch here, I keep an extra set of shears here. It's not because I'm a medic or EMT. I'm not gonna be cutting bandages off you. This was for flex guffs. <laughs> or anything that needed cut and similar that scissors would work better. Uh, you don't want to cut uh, handcuffs off or flex cuffs off somebody's wrist with a knife sharp knife. And in this pouch here, I carry an O-lace bandage um, and I tack it in there for and pressure dressing so that I can use it if I've got a pack of wound or uh, yeah, additional uh, medical care. Um, I always keep a picture of my boy in there too. Just kind of <laughs> keep it close to hearts only the pocket. Yeah. And then in the back here, this is still my old uh, SWAT card from SWAT that gives my allergies, medications that yeah. I'm on, contact info and everything. That way, if we got shot or injured or got taken to the hospital, they could pull it out of that central pouch and identify us um, yeah. uh, by looking at that card and see any type of pertinent medical information. Um, on this pouch, I like this one. It's also a first beer pouch. It uh, uh, Velcros on itself on the inside. It's very small, doesn't mm -hmm. stick out, so I can still see and run my gear yeah. and get to it without having a big bulging pouch or an admin pouch over the top of it. Awesome. Okay, and last we have your uh, track set up here. And so I remember when I was, uh, quite, a, quite a while ago when we first started, when we first um, not when the first 12 fives came out, but when we first started doing the 11 half inch trial lock rails. Uh, so, we have here your cold lower with your tri upper. Yes, sir. Um, this is a 12 and a half inch with the mid length gas system. I love this gun, all right? Uh, I, I'm big on longer length barrels. Um, I don't usually jump below tw 10 and a half. Um, carbine or mid-length system, it just depends on what you're running or why you're running it for. I like the mid-length because it's a lot less recoil, a little bit gentler on the operating system, not as much wear and tear. Um, I love the new mega rails uh, mm -hmm. that you guys are, the tri-lock rail. Those things are phenomenal. I like it because I like more of a rounded forend. I don't put a lot of vertical foregrips or anything on there. Yeah. Um, I like running it slick and most everything goes on the top rail. When I was on SWAT, the light, my white light was usually a surefire. Um, I'd run it at either 11 o'clock, yeah. 1 o'clock sight, my uh, PEC 15 and then my optic, my backup irons on it now that I don't have any need or can't afford nods. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just run it pretty much slick with yeah. optics irons and my white light on top at 12 o'clock and that keeps the sides clean for me to use work in barricades or obstacles. 
Um, if I end up a rollover position or anything like that or up against cover or barricade, I don't have anything on the sides that I might accidentally hit or run into yeah. my light or anything along those lines. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I love that uh, this gun's lightweight and it's handy, but the freaking rail is phenomenal and it's solid. I like to have a little bit of extra weight on there. It's thicker. It can take more abuse than other rails that are manufactured in this similar format, lighter weight, lower profile format. This one just feels solid. It is solid. I really like this gun. It's accurate too. Sucker will stack rounds like nobody's business. <laughs> well, great. Yeah, and, and like I said, I, I mean, good old. Uh, Good old uh, uh, endpoint pro. Pro, right there, yeah. Yep. I st I'm still stuck on the. Uh, I've ran a lot of different optics, yeah. EOTEX, and everything. I still, and you know, I've got the M5, I've got micros, yeah. but on my duty guns, I've always liked the Pro series or the old Comp series, the M2, M3 series mm -hmm. uh, optics. I've been using those for almost 30 years. Yeah. Tried and true. And yeah. they've never failed me, literally That's never. True. And I put them through some hard use and abuse, and. Uh, uh, I've just never really strayed from those optics. I run them on hunting guns. I've got one on my 3030 rifle, and those things have taken anything I've thrown at them, and they're very affordable. Yep. They're, they're not super expensive. No, exactly. yeah, it's a, it's a solid they're hobby. very affordable. Mm -hmm. well, awesome. Well, hey, thanks for sharing. And uh, I guess with all this gear showing us, and let's, uh, let's take it off the range. She's all right. Us. We can go do that.